Hi, and welcome to the channel. This is We Are Investing, a channel that's dedicated in investing and personal finance. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a tutorial on Interactive Brokers, the mobile application. So without further ado, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and let's get started. Interactive Brokers is a mobile application that will allow you to buy and sell stocks, to buy and sell options, cryptocurrencies, to look at stock valuations and conduct stock research, and also some other tools and tricks that will help you be a better investor and or trader. To get started, the first thing you need to do is open an account with Interactive Brokers. To do so, navigate to the video description, click on that link, which will send you to this page. Here, you can open an account. There are different account types. We're not going to dive into that. But first, you need to open up the appropriate account for you. Use that affiliate link in the video description to help the channel grow. Next thing is you're going to want to head to your app store. Once you're there, click on the search bar and type in IBKR mobile. This is the logo. This is the name of the app and you're going to want to download it. Once it's downloaded, you can open it. Now here's your home screen. You can see that I have a dark mode. If you would like that, I can show you how to do it. It's real easy. Just go to your settings, which is the button up at the top left and then scroll all the way down to your configuration or just click it. And here you want to scroll down and keep on scrolling to get to your application and then click on your application theme. There are two themes, a light theme, which if you click it, you can see that everything turns white behind it or the dark theme. I prefer the dark theme. I think it's more appealing to the eye. I'm going to keep it that way. Now back at the home screen, you can see how your portfolio is performing and the overall size of your portfolio. You can take a look at different time frames to see how it's performed over those time frames. You can also take a look at your top portfolio positions. This is a Roth IRA. It's for long-term investing. I'm pretty much only invested in the S&P 500 and in gold. Then if you scroll down a little bit more, there's top news, top stock market news for the day. And if you click on portfolio news, it's going to give you news that pertains to the stocks that you own in your portfolio. If you continue to scroll down, then you'll have your watch list. I'll show you how to create a new one and add stocks to it in this video. And then down below, you have cryptocurrencies. That about wraps it up for the home screen. Now, let's dive into how to buy and sell stocks on Interactive Brokers mobile application. It's real easy to do. You just click on the magnifying glass up at the top, and we're going to type in a stock. We'll click on NVIDIA. Then you're going to get a couple options here. You're going to have stock options or options chain. You're going to want to click on stock. Now here we are at the home screen for NVIDIA stock. And my chart probably looks a little bit different than yours. Let's dive into how to change those settings and what I have on. So to do so, you're going to click on the three bars at the top right and you're going to hit on chart settings. Here is where you can switch from a line, from bars like this, or from candles. I personally like looking at candles. Now my bar size, is going to be one day. Now I like to look at outside regular trading hours. So I'll click that on as well. And if I wanted to show live orders, I could do so. I'll leave that on. And if you wanted a larger chart, which I personally like, I'm going to click that on and I'll show the volume chart below as well. Now you probably don't have any indicators shown. This is probably unhighlighted. You want to highlight that if you want to add indicators. And if you want to add an indicator, it's real easy. All you do is click on add indicator. And then there's different studies. Now what I have shown, the first thing is a momentum study and it's the relative strength. So if you scroll down and you click on relative strength, click on that and then set it to the default nine days. That's what I have selected. I also have a simple moving average, the 200 day. So if you wanna have that shown, you're gonna to wanna to click on add indicator, then moving average, and you're gonna to go to simple moving average. And then you're going to change the period to 20. And then this is what your chart is going to look like. You're going to have the 200 day moving average. Each candle represents one day. And you're also going to have the RSI displayed below. That's how I personally like to take a look at charts. But you can fine tune this. You can customize this to how you like to look at stocks. Now here on the home screen, there's some other information that's displayed for NVIDIA. You can do a lot of quick research here before you proceed to actually buy or sell a stock. You can take a look at calendar events. You can look at news. So if we click on news, you're going to see that it's going to give you all of the news for NVIDIA. If you click on show more, it's just going to go to a screen that is separate and dedicated just to news. And that applies to all of these tasks. Now, if you minimize that, you can take a look at analyst ratings. 
You can take a look at analyst forecasts for EPS. You can take a look at the company profile, which is just a quick rundown of what they do. You can take a look at key ratios, financials, ownership, and competitors. Now, two of these, which is good to separate into a different screen, the first one being key ratios. We click on show more, this is what pops up. Here, you can see a lot of the key ratios, the biggest one being price to earnings. And if you click on that, you'll get an industry comparison for the price to earnings for the trailing 12 months. If you scroll right, you'll get a bar chart showing you what the price to earnings for NVIDIA has been over the last couple of years. You also get to know what the five year average is. It's up there on the top for NVIDIA, it's 174 and the current is 42.9. There are other key ratios here. We're not gonna dive into any more, but this is a very powerful screen when looking at stock valuations. Another one that's good to look at more information is the financials. Here, you're gonna see the three financial statements that are reported in the SEC filings. And you can take a look at them for the quarterly, which are 10 Qs, or the annual, which are 10 Ks. And you can take a look at the income, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. For instance, if we go back to the quarterly, we can see what revenue is. And if we click on revenue, we're then gonna get a bar chart that shows how revenue has been progressing. And we can take a look at different quarters. And you can do that for other stuff as well, such as net income and other information that is provided in the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet. Now, in order to buy and sell stock, all you have to do is hit buy or sell on the bottom of your screen. We wanted to buy in a video, we would hit on buy. And then this screen will pop up. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set our quantity. So I only wanna buy one stock. Then we're gonna set our order type. We're gonna do a limit order, or you can do a market order, or you can do all of these other orders. But those are the two orders that you're usually gonna pick. So we're gonna stick with a limit order. What this says is we're gonna put a limit price on what we're willing to pay for NVIDIA stock. A market order is basically you telling interactive brokers that you want the stock now, buy it at market price, you don't care what it is. So in our case, we'll do a limit order and let's say we only wanna buy NVIDIA if it's 160 days. The next thing is time and force. So if you click on time and force, you have day, good till cancel or at the opening. Day means that you are willing to buy NVIDIA at a max $160 a share for the trading day which is 9.30 a.m. Eastern time until 4 p.m. Eastern time. Good till cancel is you want the order to remain on the books until you cancel it. And then at the opening is you only want to buy NVIDIA at $160 a share max at the opening of the market. Now outside RTH stands for outside regular trading hours. If you turn that on, then you're willing to get this order fulfilled in extended hours trading. That can be in pre-market or after hours trading. We'll include outside RTH and we'll keep it at day. Now we could submit the order as is and that's how you're typically going to buy single shares. If you're trading and you already identified some key levels that are of interest to you, such as where you wanna sell NVIDIA, where you wanna take profits and where you wanna sell NVIDIA if it was to drop and you wanna stop loss out. You can do that by adding bracket orders. You can attach a profit taker. So if you click on that, and then you can set your limit price on when you wanna sell this stock. So let's say for us, it's $180 a share. Then you can attach a stop loss. At what price do you wanna stop out? For us, it could be $150 a share. So with this complete order, we wanna buy NVIDIA at a max of $160 a share. We wanna sell NVIDIA at $180 a share. And we also wanna stop out at $150 a share. Then if we're good with our order, we can slide to submit the order. And then you can see that this is our confirmation screen. We can cancel the order if we don't like it, or we can modify it. I don't actually want to submit this order, so I'm gonna cancel it. And then you can see that the order was canceled. To sell a stock is basically the same process, so I'm not gonna dive into that. Now let's dive into options. So to get to options, there's two ways to do it. When you search the ticker, you're going to get stock options or options chain. You click on the options chain. But since we're already on the video, we can just click on that on the top right where it says options and spreads. Now here's your default display. Your expiration dates are on the top. And if you want to filter through them, you just scroll. Right now we're looking at the January 20th, 2023 expiration date. Calls are on the left, puts are on the right. The strike price is in the middle. 
The default setting is going to show you the bid, the ask, and the last. But there's more information you should have displayed on the options chain. To do that, you're going to want to change your setting by clicking that button on the top right. Here you can adjust the amount of strikes you want to see. I'm okay with seeing all of them. Then down below, if you click on manage columns, you can see that I have more displayed. I have delta, open interest, and volume. I think at a minimum, you want to have those three displayed, but you can add more columns if you wanted to. To do so, you just scroll down and you add the column. Now back on the options chain, you can see that those things don't show up. They're there, they're just hidden. You just need to scroll to see it. Because you're on a mobile device, you can only fit so much stuff on a screen. But that information is crucial to have there to make it easier to buy and sell options. Now let's say that we're okay buying a call option on NVIDIA, and let's say we wanna buy the $180 strike price for NVIDIA at this expiration, which is the January monthly. So if we scroll down and we click on the, and we click on the ask, for the $180 strike price, you can see that this comes up. Now we can submit this order, but also you can scroll up and you can see some more information. This will give you the performance profile for this, exactly what your max loss is, what the break even is, and the max return. It will give you a PL graph and it will also give you the Greeks and some market data. It's also gonna give you a probability of profit. In this case, it's 26% because this is out of the money. NVIDIA currently trades at $162 a share, and the break even for this is $186.39. If you click on the order button, here you can adjust your limit price, the quantity, and the time in force. You can also add a profit taker and a stop loss for options as well. I'm not gonna actually go through the process of submitting the order because it's the same as buying and selling stock. What I wanna show you is how to add another leg to this options chain. So if we minimize this and we head back to the options chain, here we can add another leg. Let's say we wanted to get into a vertical spread, a call debit spread. Let's say we wanted to enter into a $10 call debit spread. So we want to sell the $190 call option and buy the $180 call option. To do that, all we're going to do is click on the bid price for that $190 call option. Here you can see that we're buying the $180 strike and we're selling the $190 strike for the same expiration date. If we scroll up, here we can see the performance profile, what our max loss is, what our break even, and our max return. Notice how the break even is far less than just buying the $180 call, and our max loss is also far less. But our max return is not infinite, it is capped at $738. The same thing, if we wanted to proceed, we can hit order and we can change what we're willing to pay for this options contract. And then you would slide to submit your purchase order and that's how you buy options. Selling options is the same thing. You can also go to your portfolio positions if you have any options contracts open that you would like to sell and sell them from there. The process is the same. But with buying and selling options, you need to understand how they work and you need to be more familiar with the options chain. Now let's go over how to add stocks to your watch list. To do so, you're gonna click on watch list down at the bottom here. And this is my favorite, but we can add a new watch list. So let's just say YouTube video. We'll just call it YouTube and we'll create a new watch list. Let's say that I wanted to add some meme stocks in here because a lot of YouTubers like to call out meme stocks. So I'll add GameStop, I'll add AMC, and I'll add Palantir, PLTR. Now you can see that I have three stocks in this watch list. It's as easy as that. Now, let's say that I was just looking at a stock, like we were looking at NVIDIA. We'll go back to the stock. Let's say there's something that I like on the charts and I want to add it to the watch list. You just click on watch list. Now you can see that I have that new watch list I just created. I can add it to that watch list that way as well. Now let's say that I'm not ready to buy NVIDIA at the current price, nor am I ready to submit a limit order that's good to cancel to buy NVIDIA at let's say $150 a share. I want to be notified when it gets to $150 so that I can relook at the stock and make up my mind then. To do that, you want to set an alert. So if we go back to the home screen and then we click on the settings, we can click on alerts. Then you're going to want to click on that little plus button. Now we're going to just 
set on our alert type. So we'll type in NVIDIA by alert. We'll, tip in, we'll type in to add a condition. So we'll hit price and we'll click on NVIDIA and we'll hit stock. The method is gonna be default and I'm gonna change that to less than or equal to $150. Then I'm gonna hit save. Then you type in your email address and you can add a message if you want. You can type in for outside regular trading hours and you can put an expiration on this alert. So let's say if you think that after a week you no longer are interested in the video, you can set this expiration to a week's time. And then you'll submit the order and you'll be notified via email when that actually happens, if it happens. Next, I wanna show you how to run scanners on Interactive Brokers Mobile. So if you click on the three bars up at the top and you hit new scanner, here you can see that I already have two available. If you were to click on the 52 week low and hit that run scanner, here are stocks that touch the 52 week low in the trading session. And if you were to click on a stock, just one single click, it's gonna give you a quick information. But then if you were to click on it again, it's gonna take you to the actual stock page. Now if we go back to our scanner, you can see that this is really helpful if at the end of every day, I wanted to see stocks that were at their 52 week low. And if I wanted to see US movers, I could. Now there is a default library here, which you can look at, but my recommendation when looking at scanners is to do this on the client portal, save it to your account so that it's already there and then you can click on it on your phone because creating a new scanner on the mobile device is quite difficult, at least in my personal opinion. And it's worthwhile to log on to a PC or Mac, set up your scanner on there, and then it will automatically show up on your phone. At least that's the way that I like to run it. And that's how I'm gonna leave it on this video. So essentially we went over the homepage, how to buy and sell stocks on interactive brokers, how to buy and sell options on interactive brokers, how to look at stocks and change the charts, how to add watch lists and modify them, and how to look at scanners on Interactive Brokers Mobile. So if you're interested in signing up with Interactive Brokers and want to download the mobile app, I highly appreciate it if you can use the affiliate link down in the video description. If you have any questions, also feel free to comment down below in the comment section. Outside of that, I thank you so much for your time. And that concludes this video. This is We Are Investing and together we are invincible. See ya.